I'm making a videos for ladies who are divorced or getting divorced now or close to getting divorced and you've been married 25, 30, 35, 40 years, okay? This video is for you. And it seems to me that most women who are divorcing were either left by some guy who cheated on them or they were with a very toxic, narcissistic, or controlling or abusive man. Mine wasn't any of that, so I wanna go a little bit into what he was like, why I left him, and what the dating world was like when I started, when I was single again, and it was nothing like I thought it would be. It turned out to be extremely disappointing. I wrote a book about all of this called the fuck list if you want to check it out about my uh, focusing mostly on the sexual part of my life but it has my marriage in there my motherhood my education growing up in germany and all of that so um i met my ex-husband when i was 19 and he was 24 and we met in, in an organic chemistry class and these are the things i liked about him uh, first of all, he's 5'10 and athletic, so he was good looking. He was really nice to me and into me. From the beginning, he was into me. He paid for me. Uh, within three months of dating, he took me on a trip to Florida to meet his friends, and I felt loved and protected. And he made some uh, woodworking gifts for me because he liked to do woodworking, and he was very masculine. He, um, he was passionate about so many things. He had just gotten out of the army, which at the time I was against the military, but I wasn't going to hold that against him. He, um, he came from a family of five. His father, his parents were, both had master's degrees and um, his father was a high up CEO in a company. But um, my ex-husband was, um, he drove a convertible stick shift that he worked on himself. It wasn't like, a, it was one that he had bought, used and painted and fixed up. So he was very mechanically inclined, which I love that about him. Uh, he played the guitar, which was awesome. He played guitar for me. And um, on his desk, he had these drawings of like recumbent bikes and other things that he designed that he liked to build. And I loved all that masculine stuff about him. He was a runner. He had wrestled in high school. Um, he was still a runner and athletic. He liked to ski. And he, uh, he, both of his parents grew up in small towns in Iowa. So he had that very good Midwestern honest. He was honest, he was hardworking, and he was frugal, and he was nice. Okay, so he was never an alcoholic. He never cheated on me. He wasn't a narcissist. He wasn't a control freak. None of that. And he never was. Uh, he wasn't a pushover. Uh, he was not a people pleaser. So everything is great about this guy. But there were a couple things I didn't like about the relationship. And I wrote about them in that book, in my book, which made me almost not marry him. And these were the two things. One was that he was not that interested in personal development as I was. I was really into my transcendental meditation practice. And he wasn't into meditating. And he, uh, he wasn't religious either, although he had grown up religious. Um, and the other thing I didn't like was that our sex life was very bad. He was not good in bed. Uh, the sex would be very quick, it would be over very quickly, and it got boring very fast because he wasn't present and he wasn't emotionally open and he didn't want to change anything about it. And I thought over time it would get better, but it didn't. Um, from the beginning, I wasn't allowed to wear lingerie or do things that I like to do. Um, at the time, I had like a side girlfriend and I wanted to do a threesome and he didn't want to do that. And I thought, well, at least he's not that lusty. He'll never cheat on me. And um, no, no person is perfect. He really wanted to have kids. From the beginning, he talked about wanting to be a father, wanting to get married, wanting to buy a house and fix up a house. And... Um, and he did all those things. By the time we got married, we, he had already bought a, our first house, a fixer-upper. 
and he was doing major construction projects on this house. He would design things and he would build them. And, you know, he knew all the engineering stuff because he was an engineering student. So he knew how to calculate loads and, you know, go to Home Depot and mix concrete and all of that. He also had had a dog at one time. He wanted dogs again. I mean, he was just a good around masculine, great man. And that's how I, what I liked about him. And I still, you can see my face light up. I love those things about him. So, um, so we kind of went into our roles and, um, we were split up for four years. We didn't talk. And then somehow our paths crossed again, which is in my book. And a few months later, he asked me to marry him and I moved to Arizona and we got engaged and short, a year later we got married. Now, the what i didn't realize at the time this is what you have to know is that the human race is evolving our knowledge is evolving and society is constantly changing at the time that he and i were raised people were really paying attention to giving their kids educational experiences you know food clothing shelter especially education uh good manners morals you know hard work keeping your word, honor, um, working on things, you know, like fixing your car. Uh, this was a time when you could still take your vacuum cleaner for repair because it actually had a metal plate on the bottom. We didn't just throw things out. This was way before the internet. And we didn't at that time, our parents weren't taught about emotions and they didn't teach us about emotions. He was born in 1957, I was born in 1961, and at that time, uh, children were to be seen and not heard. In many households, they still are, but children were to be seen and not heard, and parents were very busy, and we didn't know that much yet about child development, brain development, and um, what children need to thrive emotionally, listening to kids' feelings, you know, kids weren't supposed to have thoughts or opinions. Parents pretty much told them what to do. If a boy fell off a bike and he cried, he was told, get up, brush it off, and keep going. If a boy um, uh, twisted his foot during football practice, he was told, you keep going. And, um, and children's feelings were not honored. So a lot of us suppressed our feelings. A lot of people still do, but I wanna say that I raised my children to be more in touch with their feelings, not as much as I know now, but society is moving forward. The reason I'm going into this is because he was emotionally really walled off. And I was to some extent too, but not as much as he was. And the way he was walled off is he never felt loved by his mother. So he, he, he showed people love by doing things for them. And he helped. He would do house projects and major yard projects. And he was not a guy that sat around on the sofa drinking beer. Oh, and he loved to play basketball. And he was very, he would love to play soccer. And he was aggressive. Like he's manly and he was, I was attracted to him. Not always. There were times I wasn't, like when he wore those ugly glasses, but I digress. What I'm trying to say is there was nothing wrong with him except that he was emotionally walled off. And so the guys that are listening, those men listening who are wondering why you're not getting laid, this would be why. Because women, we want to feel your emotions and your affection in order to be receptive to you. And initially, he gave me a lot of good energy and attention, but the emotional stuff wasn't there. And I didn't really notice it so much in the beginning. And then later when I noticed it and it stung in my heart, I overlooked it, to be honest with you. I would overlook it. And the things that would sting in my heart wouldn't be, he never put me down. He never talked down to me. He made sure the kids respected me. I always had a gift for Christmas. He let me manage all the money and he took hardly any for himself because he's that Midwestern frugal. But he didn't take me on dates. 
He didn't want to do things just the two of us, and sex was only physical. If I asked him to go to a marriage class or a tantra class or a parenting class together, anything that would require an us, it was no, Sharzat, no, I don't want to do that. And it was a contempt for his feelings. It was a contempt. And at the time, I thought, well, that's just how men are. And we had our family life and all these other great things about him. You know, uh, what I want to tell you is, um, I don't have any regrets about it, the marriage. What I'm trying to tell you is that I felt, uh, I, I, um, I felt, you know, I had to push down. I just pushed down that pain and went on. And I was lonely often in that marriage. So what did I do to deal with my loneliness? Early on in our marriage, I would drink a lot. Some nights I would drink almost a bottle of wine. And, um, and then when I got pregnant, I stopped doing that. Um, and I felt very lonely um, because there was no us. I, didn't, I, was, I couldn't go to him. And I wanted there to be an us. I think growing up, I didn't go to my parents for comfort, so that's what I'm saying. For me, I allowed, I married someone who didn't make an us. I forced myself to be okay with it. I thought it was something I could tolerate because everything else about him was great. And nobody is perfect. I know that. Nobody is perfect. But this emotional neglect, emotional neglect, because he was so walled off from his emotions because he was emotionally neglected. He had to turn off his emotions because he's actually a very sensitive person. And his sensitivity would come out around his children. But it, it, he had to protect himself. And because he had to protect himself and he was so afraid to look at that, he went through our marriage walled off from me emotionally, which made me feel hurt at these times and just push it down and just do my own thing. But as a sexual woman who wanted to be, I wanted to have a better relationship in my marriage than my parents had. And I wanted to be a good wife and I wanted to be sexual and I wanted to be close and I wanted all this. And so periodically I would say, Hey, let's take this Tantra class or Hey, there's a marriage class at the church. Let's do that together. And it would always be no, and I, I never complained. I would just feel this force pushed down in my heart. And I would just kind of go quiet and be like, well, okay. Now, um, I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't really drink that much. I'm not, alcohol isn't really my thing. I started taking Vicodin when the kids were little. And then I remember there were times I started fantasizing about having sex with a woman again because I wanted that sensuality see that he should have given me now know this when i would ask to go to therapy or do something he would say no and the thing that's frustrating is he never once came to me and said charzad we need to talk this is what i need from you he never once did that he never once did that so even after we were divorced even a couple years ago it's seven years post divorce i said I think you were mad at me when we were married. Like, can you tell me what you were mad about? Because I want to give you a space to tell me. And he never would get back to me. So walled off. But, you know, uh, we'll still talk sometimes things about the kids. You know, like the other day he texted me. Hey, Sharzad, have you talked to, you know, this one of our kids? I've been trying to get a hold of him. And I said so-and-so. And he said thank you. Like, we're very cordial. He's very nice and respectful. That's the thing that was so confusing. So he also had difficulty knowing when he was angry. He didn't know when he was angry. And even when he was, he didn't think it was okay to express it because he grew up in a home where no anger was ever shown. And I, th I suspect it was because his parents grew up in homes where there was anger and they didn't want any. So he never learned how to handle it or that it was okay to have it. So um, when I felt emotionally dissatisfied and so sexually dissatisfied, he would just roll over and stick it in me and be done in two minutes. 
And it got, after a few years of marriage, I didn't even want to have sex with him anymore because he never bothered to hold my hand or ask me how I felt, and he only touched me when he wanted to release in me. Now, granted, he worked hard, he supported us, I was a stay-at-home mom, he fixed the house, like he wasn't just, uh, I wasn't just a sex object, he contributed a lot. He helped so much with the kids. That's why we had three. I, he would help so much. But when it came to sex and emotions, it was desolate. And as I was thinking about making this video, I remembered that um, I remembered that I used to fantasize about women, and I had a huge crush on my massage therapist. She was gay. I really liked her energy. And, um, and I also, uh, in my book, you'll read about, it. I think I wrote about that in the book, this woman that I tried to have the threesome with him before we got married. Um, I took a trip with her to Mexico, just her and me. I was looking for sexual experiences. He had stopped going down on me. I wanted someone to go down on me. I wanted to feel sexual things and be sexual, and he just had a very limited range. I wasn't allowed to wear lingerie. I wasn't allowed to be on top. I wasn't allowed to. It was just boring sex. Sex gets boring really fast if you don't have any real intimacy there. And, um, and for a while, I went out to a gay bar a few times. And my ex, my husband at the time, he didn't care because he's like, that's just girls. And he wasn't threatened by it. So he knew about all that stuff. I started fantasizing about other men. And I started thinking, I wonder what this guy is like in bed. I bet that guy pleases his wife. You know, I bet that guy pleases his wife. And I was doing all that because I was so sexually dissatisfied that I thought maybe somebody else would be more caring about me. Never cheated on him. I mean, I did have sex with that woman in Mexico and then one of the women at the bar, but but her fiance, at, and mine is so funny, she and her fiance came over for dinner and, you know, the guys were just like knowing that we were going to hook up together and they were fine with it. They didn't want to watch. It was just their women exploring and then I did go over to her house and we had sex together and then she wanted to explore before she decided to get married and then she did decide she wasn't gay and she ended up marrying that guy. Um, so I was and I kept taking the Vicodin and I kept taking the Vicodin and our kids got older and I had turned my attention to my kids, to um, investing. And I did, I did a lot of reading about investing, a lot of books and all of this. So I was sexually dissatisfied and eventually got to the point where um, I just started sleeping in a different room from him because I got tired of him groping me in the mornings when he had shown me no affection and the sex was boring and all about him and getting me off was reduced to a chore. I had no, I had no interest in any of that. And then when I was taking the Vicodin, it was so hard to come anyway. I couldn't come and I didn't want to have him try to make me come. He said that over the years as I took the Vicodin, I got colder and colder and he decided to, um, when the kids got older, he would just leave me. He never came to me and said, Charzad, you're getting colder. What should we do? He didn't address anything. Guys, don't let things like that go. If you think your spouse is mad at you, just bring it up and talk about it. Don't let that stuff go. You know, he just stayed angry with me. It didn't help, and I didn't know what the problem was. He should have just told, asked me why I was getting colder. I should have got off the Vicodin, and we should have worked on stuff. But you'll see he didn't want to work on stuff. You'll see. Um, now, when we were first... Uh, getting together and having sex he loved giving me orgasms he would use his fingers on me and give me orgasms with his fingers and it was really great but as the years went on he started resenting it as he started resenting me and not dealing with his resentments against me I think one of his biggest resentments was that I didn't go back to work um, when the kids were older because he wanted me to work and um, he didn't say it, and he didn't appreciate me being home with the kids. He did not appreciate that at all. 
His mother worked and uh, he wanted me to work and his now wife works. They're hard workers, so I think he's happy with her, but he did not appreciate what I was doing at home. And when I started feeling less appreciated by 10 year of our marriage, I started being less careful with his money. So before I was like, we'll get a 15 year mortgage, we'll get a cheaper house. And in the end, I didn't give a shit anymore. So I got colder towards him. I got more critical of him. And because I was emotionally neglected, I became less and less of a good wife. And I knew I wasn't being a good wife because when he came home from work, he didn't look for me, he looked for the kids. And I didn't feel loving towards him anymore. When I asked to go to therapy, he didn't want to spend the money on that because he wanted to spend the money at, on Home Depot. So no, I wasn't perfect, but I always come back to the person who doesn't want to go to therapy is the problem, and I can't go if he doesn't want to go. So um, as the time went on, he resented giving me an orgasm because it was taking too long, and he... And I always felt like I was just a burden. It took me so long to come. Like now I can come in like 10 minutes or at the most. It's pretty quick. But when it was with him, it would be 30 minutes. I just couldn't get turned on. And it was because he would just lay there, lay there next to me. This is what he would do. He would have sex with his eyes closed. He never once opened them. He never wanted to kiss. Never, never kiss. And I didn't want to kiss him because his lips, he always had that spit on his lips. Did that on purpose, subconsciously. I don't know if he was sexually abused. I don't think so, but he had a thing against kissing. And he would just lay there next to me, and then he would just kind of like touch me. And he acted so bored like I was a fucking chore and obligation. And that is not arousing. I was not arousing. And then about the kissing... Sometimes I, I, I just, I'm just like a natural hugger toucher, I guess, or I was so used to kissing my kids. I was just kissing everybody, you know? So I would, when I gave him a blow job and he loved my blow jobs, I would kiss my way down on his chest, kiss, 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 kiss all the way down. And I would forget that he didn't like to be kissed. I would just be automatic mode. And he would get mad at me like, don't kiss me. That feels like fish lips. And I'm wondering uh, what happened to him that made him hate kissing so much. Because in all my years after and with all the men I've been with and in my previous business as an escort, the, all the men love kissing. They love me to kiss on them and kiss on their body and kiss their lips. So I don't know what his problem was. Um... Sometimes I would try to play romantic music like Lionel Richie when we were having sex and he would say, turn that off. Anyway, um, the Vicodin thing was getting a pain in the butt. I was spending so much money that I felt guilty for it and I got so dependent on them that I, I, didn't, I lost my freedom. I couldn't go anywhere for more than three days because I couldn't be away from the pharmacy and I was constipated and had to take the laxatives. And I'm like, I got to get off of these pills. I stopped taking the Vicodin and three months after I stopped taking them, I told him that I had been on them. When I came off the Vicodin, I actually started feeling more in my body, more in my heart. Um, all those drugs really are a disconnection from the emotions and from the body. And I started turning my attention again to my marriage. Now with the kids older and with me being a more sensual person, having had gone through the parenting experiences with my three children, being um, older and more confident, being in my sexual prime, I turned to my husband. I was like, I want to fuck. And men want sex all the time. He's going to love the new me. Well, he didn't love the new me because he didn't complain all the years that we weren't having sex. And the sex I wanted was more connected, more sensual, and I was no longer okay with being told no. But what I didn't know was that I couldn't change him. I thought 
first of all, I thought he would like the new me, and he didn't. Second, I thought if I could just get him to see that being connected and being sensual would be so pleasurable, if I could just say the right thing or ask the right question, I was trying to change, I was trying to understand why he didn't want it, and I was trying to change him. Those are the two problems, and I'm sharing this in case you do that. I was puzzled. I'm like, I'm not trying to get you to shoot up heroin. I'm not trying to get you to rob a bank. I just want you to be a whole being centrally integrated, pretty much. I just want you to share your sexual affection with your wife. But he couldn't because of this walled off emotional thing he had. He couldn't. He couldn't. He didn't want to. It was buried in him. And... So the way I dealt with it at the time, I never thought of leaving him. I thought this is my husband who's loved me and provided for me all these years. We have these children together. We had built a house together. We had a life together. Um, this, I never thought of leaving him. All I thought was, I don't understand why he's so walled off. How can I get him to change? And third, how can I deal with the feelings I'm having about it? Because, see, before that time, when he told me no, I would feel this feeling in my heart and I would distract myself. But then, the last three years of our marriage, so when the kids were older, I wasn't willing to distract myself. I wanted to feel everything. I'm like, I didn't get off these pills to have some guy not wanting to connect with me. I want to feel, I want to feel everything. And what I was feeling was alternating anger and intense pain because, not because I felt rejected. This is a difference between me and a lot of other people. I didn't feel rejected as the main thing. I wanted to express, what I felt at the time was I want to express all this passion that I have, all these feelings, and you keep telling me no, so I was frustrated. I felt like a volcano that the lava kept being pushed down, and uh, I was so frustrating, and maybe there was a part of me that felt, felt rejected that I haven't even tuned into yet. Um, maybe I need to tune into that more. Uh, I'm very aware that I felt pushed away and to be honest, if I think about it, I felt, you know, minimized, like I wasn't important. Actually, you know, he would get ready to go play tennis with his buddies or he would do the dishes. He'd be all excited. Uh, I guess he liked doing the dishes. He would get all excited doing the dishes. And I'm like, why are you more excited doing the dishes than fucking me? Now, mind you, I was not sexually needy. Like, I hadn't asked him for sex ever in our marriage. He was the one always initiating it, and I would just go along with it. But then I started liking it at the end when I was older, and it was my late 40s libido kicking in. That's a real thing. And I started uh, that one time, one time in our marriage I initiated sex, one time. This was right in those last three years, and we were sitting on the sofa, and I just kind of touched his leg, and he pushed my hand away. And that was the last time I tried to initiate sex. I didn't know what was wrong with him. Was it a control thing? Was he worried about his ED? I don't know, but ultimately, it was that sexual stuff is the reason why I left him. That's what I wanted to tell you. It was the sexual stuff, the emotional stuff, neglecting me sexually, and when I made that video earlier that men want to make women happy, I don't think he ever wanted to make me happy. I never felt that way. I don't think he ever gave a shit how I felt. And I'll tell you why. Because he didn't even know how he felt. Yes, he was kind. He's never been mean to me, even though I left him. He's never been mean. But he couldn't feel his own feelings, so he couldn't feel mine. In order for a man to make you happy, he has to know what it's like for him to be happy, for him to be unhappy. He has to be able to feel his feelings. And then he can tune into yours. When I divorced him, I figured I would be alone for a couple years, and then I would start dating. I had no idea. And I thought I would meet men like him, 
great men like him, except they would have one thing he didn't have, which was they'd be in touch with their emotions and their sexuality. And like my ex-husband, he would love me. We would be monogamous. We would have a great relationship. I figured I would meet another man around my age at the time I was 51, meet another man in his early 50s that also was divorced and had children, and he would just be more emotionally attuned than my ex-husband. Um, and I figured it would be very easy to find a man like that. Oh my God, this is the part of the divorce I'm talking about. There are no men like that. I have not met one man like that in my nine years single. I went on Match.com and I met the, all the guys in their 50s were just players. At the time I got divorced, I was do, consulting for school districts. So I had a pretty good job, a professional job. I didn't pay the best, but I was restarting my career. I didn't ask my ex-husband for money when I left because I don't like to plunder men. I'm equally empowered. I can make my own way in the world. He supported me long enough. So I went to the courthouse to file and we split everything amicably and we didn't have any lawyers. So um, I met some guys on Match.com and they were all players and they would cancel the coffee dates at the last minute, you know, um, or they'd been single for so long. I didn't get that sense that my ex-husband had given me of wanting to provide. Excuse me, I need to get some water. I didn't get that sense from a man that he wanted to provide for a woman because see a lot of these guys who are divorced are saying I will never get married again and I'm just going to go out and you know bang these women. I came into a completely different world than the one I had left as a single woman in the mid 80s. A world in which men were doing online dating they weren't approaching women in public I was no longer in these big social circles of single people like in college um, and I was uh, I was in an age group where most people were already married and many of them already had a lot of problems in their lives I didn't want a man with baggage and to me a lot of stuff is baggage <laughs> you know I wanted somebody who um, had their life together and who was divorced and had children um, and a lot of these guys just wanted to have sex or they had erectile dysfunction and my ex-husband had erectile dysfunction I just wanted to experience a relationship with a lot of good sex with a man with a hard penis like I had gone my entire marriage with bad sex I wanted a sexual relationship with a man who loved me and that was not to be found they either had erectile dysfunction or they were players, serial players. They would skip the coffee dates. They wanted to go out and get drunk. A lot of these older single guys, divorced guys, are drinking a lot. I don't want a guy who needs to drink because I'm living this very authentic life. And I'm going out dancing with my friends at night and I'm just drinking water because I want to experience and I want to feel. So that's how I started one night I'm out dancing and this young guy asked me to dance and he was 20 and he was good looking and his cock was really hard as it turned out and um, I got sidetracked with these young guys not understanding the nature of men that they would just fuck me and leave I didn't know that I was so ignorant ladies learn from me I should probably make a whole different video on this a man that is interested in you it's sexual it's his penis he will have sex with you and he will be gone till the next time he wants sex with you if you want to make sure that a guy is actually interested in you you have to see that he's giving to you not sex which is taking giving to you by caring what you want protecting you caring about you giving to you nurturing you providing for you and you feel this man could be the father of my children. He's providing. He's paying for me. He's taking care of me. And you can be in the receiving mode and you trust him and you feel safe. I didn't, I didn't even kiss any of these guys on the dates because I didn't ever feel like he's got me. He can take care of me. These guys were all in it for themselves. And I was just the next woman on the carousel of women. They were dating for a relationship or dating for their next hookup. 
some of these guys in their 50s had really young children from some random woman they had some mistress they'd had on the side all their kids were grown and they have a little one along now they've got baby mamas and all this stuff and uh uh, and then as I got older, I got more and more disappointed with what I saw in the men. Their energy wasn't good, you know. They walk all crunched up and like old geezers and, you know. And that's where some of my videos come from when I'm angry or frustrated. It's my frustration that the world of men isn't what it was when I, that I expected. And I'm not interested in younger men. I'm interested in men probably 40s and 50s. And a lot of those guys, they like older women, but they just want to have sex with us. And I don't find older men attractive. I think they've let themselves go. I think a lot of people have let themselves go. What I want to say is that um, I was really disappointed. I looked around and I saw, oh my gosh, I kept meeting people that were on their second marriages and that met when they were in their 50s some old high school sweetheart or someone who'd reconnected them and I was like they're so lucky because I really wanted to meet someone and get married again or have a relationship again and it just never happened and then I started thinking what is wrong with me there's got to be something wrong with me and so after two years of being single I spent probably spent thirty thousand dollars at least on coaches trying to find out what was wrong with me why i don't attract these men i you know because these coaches are telling me oh there oh uh there's a world of great men out there Sharzat. you're just not seeing them because of your internal mindset and your what you believe the world is and your projections and your internal state the external the world reveals who you are but some of the men I met when I asked them what was wrong with me, they'd say, there's nothing wrong with you. You're a great girl. So I don't know. I started thinking what's wrong with me. And then finally I thought, well, maybe there's nothing wrong with me. And only in the last few months have I realized that the world has really changed. If you listen to Chris Williamson or some of the people talking about the sexual revolution and the hookup culture, um, you know, there are these, for the young people, uh, there are these guys out there that are spinning plates, there are empty suits, they're chats, they have no personality. And then you have 90% of men who've given up, you know, and I'm mad at those men who've given up. That's what those videos were about. I'm angry with them because when you, these guys have given up and they don't approach, it means that I don't have a boyfriend or a husband. I can't get a boyfriend or a husband when men have checked out. Men say they've checked out because women are entitled. I'm not entitled. I'm down for a really juicy, loving, healthy relationship. And all the things I wanted to give my husband that he didn't appreciate and didn't want, there I have a lot to give. Someone's got to want that. Um, so, But now in my age group, it's a completely different thing. And I just think that these really great guys these very developed men who've worked on their stuff, their wives are not leaving them. <laughs> their wives are not leaving them. Women only leave, unless they're like bitches who are dissatisfied or whatever. Women only leave their husbands if they've been very emotionally neglected and hurt. And, and so the single, so the divorced men that are out there are men who were horrible husbands. Or they had a wife that was abusive or neglectful or cheated on them. And so a lot of them are still very hurt and they haven't done the work to build their self-esteem and be happy. They got to have to drink a lot or use women for sex. And over the years, as I've been on dating sites off and on, it's the same guys on there. It could also be the same women on there. So the bottom line is, when I was married, I thought eventually I will meet a man for dating. You know, two years out. Not immediately, two years out. And I haven't. I don't see anyone I want to date. And I feel like I'm getting on some soapbox here, you know, like I'm not seeing them, but they're not out there. If I want to look for an age-appropriate partner, say ages 55 to 65, I'm not impressed with what I see in men. 
Um, they are they either don't do any strength training, so they're very skinny and rigid, very skinny, scrawny. Um, they don't have anything going on. I've met some men that are like, well, I go to work and I come home and this is my house. I'm like, you're boring. Can you be passionate about something? Can you be edgy? I'm super edgy. Like I go to the edges. I live off my own thing. I need someone who's exciting, you know, who's up to something, who's really passionate and healthy and authentic. I haven't met anyone like that. So that's where some of my anger comes from in my rant videos is that I'm really disappointed. One of my coaches told me, well, Sharzad, if you're disappointed in men, they can sense that. They won't want to be around you. They sense your disappointment. I'm like, okay, I got to hide my disappointment, be excited. But they are disappointing. They're freaking boring. They go to work. They come home. They have a drink. They're not doing anything edgy. Like they're, they're not starting a new political party or a new business or mentoring other people. Like they're not doing anything exciting. Um, and I don't want to be with someone who's boring. My ex-husband was exciting to me. I thought he was exciting. Um, and, um, you know, we had our kids together. So he was exciting with his inventions and his ideas and, you know, his interests that he had that were different from mine. But now that I'm older, I don't need someone to raise a family with me. I don't need someone to support me. But I want someone who wants to, who has presence, who's going to give me his presence and is really into me and is manly. One thing I didn't like about my ex-husband was that he was very awkward around people. He wasn't very good with people. Like he would yell at his employees because he would get impatient or he would, like if we went to social things, I had to do all the talking instead of him. I want someone who's more outgoing, more confident, more assertive in that way. And I want someone who's very sexual and who's good with his emotions and who's into personal development and who cares how I feel. And if I can't find that, I'd rather be alone. But ladies, the pickings are not good out here. If you can get your husband into counseling, do that because there is not good pickings out here. If you're a woman into personal development and you have stuff going on, if you're not just interested in a superficial life and you want a man of depth, the pickings are not good, ladies. I'm telling you, I would like to know, you know, if anyone disagrees, maybe you live in a part of the country where all the good guys are. I'm in San Diego. <laughs> I think Midwestern guys are better. But in San Diego, it's very transitory. People don't have that same sense of community. They treat each other like objects, you know, there isn't. But, you know, you have a lot more people to choose from. So, um... I don't, the people here, I'm from Europe, I like a man who's well-dressed and has some basic good manners and is educated and speaks well and makes me think. I love men like that who can tell good stories and make me laugh. And, um, and um, uh, I have not, well, I, have, I have not found that. Uh, I'm willing to try new things. I'm willing to try new places, but honestly, um, you know, I, I'm not inspired or excited by what I see. So pretty much I don't go out and I'm just like, I'm good here. I'm, I've am i learned to be happy on my own. And um, I don't want to be bothered with people who are boring or just want to plunder me for sex. So this is my experience. Um, I just want to put it out there is like the single life is not what it's made up to be. And I'm not a woman who needs men's attention or validation, although I like it. I like the intensity of a man's strength and energy focused on me. I love that, receiving that, but um, but I'm not impressed by uh, 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 the men that I've that I've met. Um, just haven't been. So uh, there you go. Um, so what I would look for is someone like my ex-husband, who's um, you know just a better version of him. Um, is what I would look for. And um, thank you. That was a long video. I, I couldn't really make it any shorter because if I just tell people what it's like now without knowing what I had, it wouldn't make sense because when I hear women who are divorced, they always had some asshole of an ex-husband. My ex-husband is not an ass. He is not. 
And most women would have stayed with a guy like that. Most women would have stayed with a guy like that. And there are many women that are with a man like that. Many, many women are with a man like that because, you know, it's comfortable and it's secure. But I wanted to keep growing. Um, my mom is a TM teacher. I always wanted to keep growing and I, I needed to keep growing and I couldn't keep growing without him. And what I put on my Facebook at the time when I left him was I left him to be more and feel more because with him I couldn't be more and I couldn't feel more because he kept telling me don't feel Shahrazad don't feel although he would say I love when you talk about your feelings so that cause I, because that makes me feel but yet he didn't want me to feel he wouldn't let me feel and you know I, I need I need to be I need to be able to feel so I left him for me so I could be keep growing it would, I did it for me at the same time you know I'm sad that it didn't work out I would have loved to have had it work out we went to our counseling uh, at the end when I was trying to decide whether I should divorce him or not just the last three months I was in the guest room and um, the counselor asked why we were in separate rooms and we told her and I was determined I was not going to go back in his bedroom with him treating me that way and he wasn't willing to change anything either. Like he just didn't want to do change what he needed to. He didn't want to open to keep me. So he was more comfortable leave, me leaving than having to look deal with his feelings. And you might say he didn't love me, but he did love me. Those last three years were the closest we ever were. He wanted to spend so much time with me. All of a sudden it was, do you want to go to coffee? Do you want to meet me after work for a beach walk? Do you want to go watch the sunset? It got to where when I went to the grocery store, he would go with me and he hated grocery shopping. I forgot to tell you guys that part. Some of you are going to be like, well, he didn't love you. Yes, he did love me. Um, he would give me foot massages. We would have dinner together. We would give each other these 30 second hugs every day. We would have coffees together. Like we started being so much closer. But he didn't want to do that emotional opening that I needed, especially sexually. I will never again have sex with a man who doesn't care how I feel. Never. Even when I was an escort, I never had sex like what he gave me, even as an escort never had sex like that they all wanted to connect with me and i will never again be with someone like that now after i left him he cried when i saw him six months later i thought he was dying he was so haggard and thin he looked like he'd been crying he was devastated but that was better for him than feeling whatever it was and maybe you know he knew deep down that he couldn't give me what he wanted and maybe his soul knew that he, we both had to go our separate ways so we could keep growing and um, not all relationships are meant to be forever I know I divorced him but honestly I feel like he left me first you know he left me he was never actually there for me the way I needed and so um, I just couldn't be with him anymore and he didn't want me he didn't want to make he didn't want to go into his feelings which is what he would have had to do and I would have stayed so I guess we left each other, you know, but no, when you get out here in the single world, it's not any better. There are a lot of wounded people out here and the older people get, the more their wounds show up. Now, if you're looking at women, you've got all these Botox ladies with the fake breasts and a lot of people drinking and they're disgust. I get grossed out by that. I'm sorry. I can't. I just, I just can't. So a lot of wounded people out there that, um, life hasn't treated them well their health has gone downhill you know their attitudes have gone downhill their lives have become boring um and i'm not inspired i'm inspired by them to be honest so that's my experience um being single nine years and um it's not the dating life is uh, is uh non-existent for me it's not great like i thought it would be i thought it would be full of possibilities i was so full of possibilities and um and so i would see some guy online is like he was a father and he had kids i'm like oh this could be a great next husband 
but he just wanted to bang. Like, what ha what happened to men wanting to provide? They're all disenchanted by the women who hurt them and took their money. <coughs> And if a man isn't in the space that he wants to provide and protect for me, I don't feel safe opening to him and I can't receive him. You know, so a man has to want to protect and provide. And I can see that in guys. When I see a guy in the store, I'm like, this guy could provide. This guy has nothing to offer. I pick up on that. If a guy, the only way I would date a guy is if I get the feeling that he can take me into his arms, literally and figuratively. He can take me into his home, into his space, into his energy. He can take care of me. He can provide for me. He's got me. And then I can open to him sexually. But if I don't feel like he's got me, and I didn't feel that way with any of these 20-somethings in this book, that's why I didn't have orgasms with them. If I don't feel like you've got me, I don't want to go there with you. You know? So um, it's not just physical, it's about the whole emotional space. And that's why I left him. So it's all about emotions. It's all about caring about other people. Okay, this is my longest video ever. I might have gone past the YouTube timeline. If you want my book, um, it's on Amazon. If you want to work with me or talk to me, um, you can contact me for a coaching call. We can just chat or I can guide you through some things somatic exercises, cognitive behavioral therapy, or I can just listen to you if you want someone to talk to. Um, my name is Sharzat Morgan and thank you for watching my video.